Welcome to lesson 2. Whilst you've been reviewing lesson 1, we've made a few small changes in the background. The first change was to rename the original project to London Guidebook. In order to open this project, we can select it from the Recent Projects option. The second change we've made was to replace the general blurb with more specific information about the City of London. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some audio narration to this blurb, so we need to select the audio option from the toolbar above. Navigate to your folder containing your resources and select the audio file you want to play. We'll pick the MP3 one. As you can see, it appears in the resource pane, it appears on the scene and it was also displayed in the timeline below. With the audio file selected, we now have more options available to us in the media panel on the right. These include being able to autoplay the file, show or hide the controls, loop and preload the resources. The other functionality that we have is if we select the audio file in the resources panel, we'll see it appears down here. This gives us the option to group together various types of resource. For example, our browser may not support MP3, so we can add a different format. Click the plus and select the other audio format that you require, in this case an OG file. And they're now both grouped together, even though only one appears in the actual resource panel. When you export to HTML5, both of those resources will be saved with the project and the browser will be able to choose the one that it is capable of playing. However, we now need to initiate the playback of the file. In order to do this, we have various options. We're going to use the timeline. As you can see, the audio file is displayed in the timeline already and underneath it is displayed playback. If we click the plus next to the playback option, we can start or play or pause the audio file. However, we don't want to start at zero seconds, so we're going to move the cursor. Now we've set it to one second, we can start the playback. So click plus and click start and choose the default options. We can send the timeline cursor back to the beginning using go to start and then we can click play to see what's going to happen. London is the capital and largest city of both. It's also useful to note that if you want to check which resource you're actually playing, you can double click on it in the resources panel. London is the capital and largest city and you will get a preview of that media. Now we've triggered our audio file, we could simply publish and see what happens. However, with recent changes to browsers, auto-playing of files is not possible. Therefore, we have to interact with the document before any audio will commence. In order to do this, we're going to create a start page. So let's create a new scene. Drag the scene to the beginning. Unselect Auto Advance and we'll just create a simple start button that allows us to interact with the document before we commence playing the audio files. Create a simple event handler that will jump to the next scene and publish. open in browser and when we click start London is the capital and largest city of both England and the United Kingdom St had we not included this interaction where the user actually has to interact with the document the audio file would not have played from the timeline this is an issue with new security in browsers not an issue with Sayola now our menu page is almost complete. We have our information, we have our image, we have our menu buttons which visually change when we move the mouse over them including the cursor. 
The last change we want to make to the menu scene is to add some animation to make it more interesting for the user. If you remember correctly, the image we have displayed on the scene is much larger than the image that we can actually see. This is because we placed it inside a group and used the group to crop the image. If we go to the elements panel, we can see the London group with the London image inside. Let's start by unlocking them. If we now make sure that the London image is selected and select the dimensions panel, we can see that the left side of the London image is at minus 482, which is why the image appears cropped. If we set this value to zero, we can see the original position of the image. Our next task will be to animate this from zero to the minus 482 that we have chosen to show. So in order to do this, we need to leave it set at zero, bring the timeline cursor back to the beginning and place a keyframe for the left position. Click the little option next to the left and it will appear on the timeline with the value left as zero. We then reposition the timeline cursor and we'll choose 10 seconds. Again, select the left option to set a keyframe and a new keyframe option will appear at 10 seconds on the timeline. If we now move the cursor, we can see that nothing happens. This is because the keyframe at both points is zero. So I've moved it back to the 10 seconds keyframe and I'm going to adjust my left position back to minus 482. Now when I move the cursor, you can see the animation occurs and if I click play, we can see that in action. Now you may have noticed that our animation appears to bounce and that's because the easing is set. So if I select the animation keyframes on here and I click on the easing option, you'll notice it's set as out bounce. I'm just going to pick a standard linear option and this time when I play it, The animation appears smooth from the first keyframe to the last keyframe. Let's publish that and see it in the browser. Save and export to HTML5. Open in the browser. Click Start. And our image animated beautifully from zero all the way down to minus 482. Close the browser again and our menu scene is now complete. In the next part of this lesson we'll look at the eye scene and focus initially on resources. We're going to look at some of the features of resources in a new project. So from the toolbar select new. Give the project a name. and select a size. In the previous project, we used the options on the toolbar to add our resource, for example, the audio option. In this instance, we're simply going to drag and drop resources from our resource folder onto the canvas. Notice now that the resources on the canvas in the resources pane and on the timeline. However, the name is different to the name of the resource in our resources folder. This isn't overly helpful as we would then have to rename our resource in the timeline in order to find it more easily if we were to use actions. Let's delete the resource. Instead, this time, will drop the resource from our resources folder directly into the resources pane. It hasn't yet appeared on the canvas or in the timeline, so let's do that. 
Notice that this time the name of the resource in the timeline does match the name of the resource in our resources folder. Of course we don't have to add one resource at a time, we can select multiple resources and add them to the resources pane. I can now save the project. The resources folder we were using was just a generic resources folder that we placed on the desktop to collect all our resources that we were going to use for the project together. It is not the resources folder used by Sayola. This is stored with the project. Let's have a look at that instead. We can access this by right clicking on the tab of the project and selecting open location. At present you can see two different files inside here. The first is the project file and the second is a folder containing all the resources. As you can see these are all the resources that we added to the resource pane. Let's see what happens when I publish my project. First let's resize our image so it fits on the canvas. We can do this from the dimensions panel. As our image is locked we simply have to enter one value and the other will adjust automatically. I'm now going to publish. Normally we open it directly into the browser. We also have the option to open the publish folder. However, if we go back to the folder that was already open, we can now see that a new folder has been added to our project, the HTML5 output. If we open this, we can see we now have the resources temp.html file and accompanying files and resources folder, inside of which is all of the resources from the resource panel even though we are only using the image. The other very important point to note is how Sayola exports resources. If we look at our current project the only resource that we added to the canvas was the London Eye 2009 image. We also resized this image so it was only 640 pixels wide and yet the exported image is nearly two and a half megabytes in size. This is because Sayola uses the original resource rather than rescaling to fit the size that we chose. You need to take this into consideration when generating your resources and optimize them to suit your current project. Let's add a few more resources to the project. If we select any of the resources on the current scene we can see that we also have an option in here to change that resource to something else either from the resources pane or from another file on our computer. The other important thing to remember is if you need to edit one of the resources you should choose the resource from the Sayola project file rather than your original resources file. So if we decide to pick this resource and change it so it's not just black and white we locate the project folder and the resources folder. Select the resource we want to edit, drag and drop it into our editor, change the colour to red and I'm going to export it still as an SVG back to the original folder. resources folder, film strip, overwrite it and now we can see it's changed in the resources folder. However if we go back to Sayola it still appears as the black and white one because we need to refresh the canvas. You do this by right clicking and reload canvas. The resource has now changed. The last two things to say about resources are one, if you want to preview your resource, you can double click it in the resources panel the 
And lastly, you should always try and give your resources sensible names, including ensuring that they are web safe, which means avoiding spaces or characters that you shouldn't use. Let's return to our project. You're now ready to build the content for the eye scene, which will continue in lesson three.